Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. Uh, it, today is April 21st, 2021. Still just sort of struggling our way through this Biden administration. Uh, but before we get into any of the topics of the day, uh, let me introduce to you our panel. So in our upper left-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Evers. He is a pilot in the state of California. And in our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. And as a special guest today, we have Aaron Comey uh, of Escaping the Echo Chamber. Uh, so it's a, a sort of a liberty-based podcast, I guess. We'll get into that with Aaron throughout the uh, show and let him have a chance to talk about his podcast. Uh, so, uh, to, and my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. So let's uh, let's talk with Aaron a little bit. You know, that this is something we've been doing a podcast here for about a year now on this, and some of us were working with uh, Libertarian Counterpoint. We were, uh, you know, participating in that show before that, um, and so uh, you know, this has been kind of a uh, you know fun experience. But uh, you know, recently uh, uh, we kind of uh, ran into Aaron's show too, and thought it might be interesting to hear about other people who've had experiences with running a podcast as well uh, during this time of, I guess, you know, uh, assault on our liberties. Uh, so uh, let's jump right to it. Uh, so Aaron, uh, tell us a little bit um, about your show, Escaping the Echo Chamber. Um, yeah, well, I started it. I started the YouTube channel about uh, three years, well, actually four years ago, and I just wasn't putting up a lot of content. So especially over the past year, I said, you know what? I have to get serious. I have to just actually put out some more content. And I started, you know, working on just being more regular, getting content out uh, and just getting more comfortable in front of the camera and, and actually behind the scenes, you know, editing and everything like that. So what's the focus of your show? Uh, I mean, what kind of topics do you usually like to talk about on your show? Um, generally, you know, the political, social topics of the day. I want to provide a perspective, you know, from like a libertarian point of view, but at the same time, I don't want to just be preaching to the choir. Uh, and so I, cause I see this so much of just tribalism and people just have these, they fall into these camps and they don't want to hear anything different. So I try to uh, bring in other perspectives in terms of, of seeing things, of trying to see things from other perspectives to you know, try to get people to say, well, you know, maybe, maybe I can be a little bit more open to what somebody else thinks about this. Could you um, could you give us could you give us an example? I mean, I, I I love what you just said about trying to open up, you know, um, minds and giving people a little different perspective. I really yeah. love that thought. But could you kind of like give us an example of what exactly, uh, uh, of uh, well, how how you do this or or what you do in terms of Getting right. all that different perspective out there, right? So um, as of now, I, I like I'm not at the point where I've been bringing guests on, but okay. what I'll do is I'll examine um, a topic and try to see it from the perspective of other other people. So like I did a show um, last year, I did a, a, a episode about how horrible Biden is, but then I okay. said, you know what? <laughs> let me do let me do an episode with what's positive about Biden or what I, what other people may like about Biden because there were people that were celebrating in the streets. And so I said, let me try to see things from their perspective. Okay. Um, additionally, the, the January 6th incident, like I said, let me look at, from the perspective of people who were there, who were scared, who felt like the, their world is collapsing. And they, they felt that this is what they needed to do in order to, you know, preserve, you know, some kind of, of normalcy, you know, so right. from, stop things from just descending into chaos. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Well, certainly the, the uh, point of your show, I guess, in the title, Escaping the Echo Chamber, I mean, that's, that's uh, on point with the problems of today. I mean, we, we see all these people, and they're either on Team Red or Team Blue, and it doesn't matter what comes out of their team, it's golden, and the other team is just a monster. <laughs> Seems to be yeah. what, uh, uh, what it is, and it's, it's really terrible because I think we're really seeing this in the media play out as well, too. Uh, you have uh, 
sort of the CNNs and others, and they almost seem to be a, a, a wing of the Democrat Party. And then, of course, Fox News. Certainly, I mean, you saw it with Hannity. I mean, it was almost yeah. like uh, uh, Trump's personal interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I, it, it's kind of uh, it's really dangerous because we're yeah. we're almost like we're living in two different realities. Yeah, uh, really, really, and it's it's like people are just so convinced of their own righteousness, and that in in itself is a dangerous position to be because if somebody is a hundred percent that they're con uh, convinced they're righteous. And that anybody who disagrees with them is evil. How far will they go to stop that evil? And yes, it's it's, it's where we're at right now. And that, and you know that's that, that's a very good point because now I think I think the whole the media, especially the mainstream media and probably big tech also, is really about demonizing people, people to disagree with. Yes, I mean look at our little show. We don't we, you know we just started our show about a year ago. We put up content often. YouTube is a, just begin taking down some of our stuff. We we had we had one show was taken down some time ago, and another one is is, is just being taken down as James announced. So the demonization of people they disagree with is something that is becoming so commonplace that people be, be beginning to think it's normal and and acceptable. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, and it's 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 so it's it's scary because people. Um, the the way the people are just so convinced about their the righteousness of their tribe, they will watch their tribe do something the other tribe just finished doing, but because their yes. tribe is doing it now, it's a good thing. Oh, now no, no, it was it was it was the worst thing in the world when the other guys did it. Oh, well, now yes. we're doing. Oh, no, no, this is this is okay. This is there's a reason for this. This makes sense. <laughs> Well, and, and we just saw this too with yes. respect to the elections. Uh, uh, 2016, the election was invalid and it was all about election security and it was Russia, Russia, right. Russia. Now, suddenly, you question the election? Oh my gosh, if you say anything, we're going to cancel you because that's yeah. just unpatriotic, right. you know, and you want right. to ruin the country. So, yeah. Just, yeah. But that, that is something too with uh, respect to the self righteousness. Uh, that's a, you know something I caught on to that you were saying. And, it, you know, I think if we look back into the evils of history, you know, I mean, to, where people just did terrible things to each other, it's it's usually in the vein that people have thought they were more righteous than the people that they were, they were, uh, you know, I guess brutalizing. And so I, yeah. I think that's something maybe we're, we're might, hopefully we're not heading into that right now. <laughs> um, Aaron, I have a, yes. have you noticed that also in social media, this, uh, this whole thing with echo chambers and and uh, so you'll have you know somebody and and no one dares step in to their echo chamber with uh, something that disputes it because they're not part of that tribe uh, and so do you notice yeah. this tribalism? Uh, oh, absolutely, yeah, okay. absolutely, Ab and it's and although I understand why like YouTube and Twitter does do some of the things they do it's actually not helping so where in terms of like twitter where they actually now where they introduced a feature where people can choose who can respond to <laughs> their tweets oh is so, that right yes uh, so yeah, that, I, I never I, I never knew that uh-huh yeah so it's great so you'll see a certain tweet like Alyssa milano did it so she did a tweet about how great the democratic party is and then we wouldn't let anybody who she doesn't follow respond so it just became so all the responses are like yes yes you're right democrats are awesome you know and it's like and so everybody just looks down this feed and just believes that's that's the entire reality uh, and anybody it's got to just be a minuscule minority who, who disagree and they're crazy anyway <laughs> an absolute echo chamber <laughs> that, that's uh that's almost brilliant when you think about it. Because I mean, the first thing I would do is think, "What? I can't say anything." Okay, I'm coming back. Oh, oh, oh! Now I'm really pissed. I'm respond to this person. Uh, uh. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know. You know what's funny about that too, though, is I remember early on in the Trump administration, uh, Trump tried to ban some people from his Twitter stream. I think, and yeah, then yes. told he couldn't. Yes. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, guess, AOC, AOC also tried to do that too. Yes. And she couldn't. Yeah, she also tried. Hmm. <laughs> well, I bet Tulsi Gabbard didn't do it. 
<laughs> well, Tim, 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 we know about the obsessions of Tulsi, okay? I mean, come on. <laughs> hey, hey, she looks great in a white pantsuit, okay? So, so give me a break. <laughs> Well, so so Aaron, uh, you know what what specifically drove you to start uh, this uh, this YouTube channel? Um, well, I had when I was running for office in New York. Um, at, at the very beginning, I decided to you know to make some videos for Facebook, and it was hard. <laughs> like I remember, I my first video, I think I spent like an hour and a half trying to make a five minute video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to my world. <laughs> oh yeah, you and I should talk about uh, making videos. But, right, yeah. like it was a lot harder than I thought it would be, and so I said, "Okay, I need to, I need to get practice with this." And um, I had the opportunity to go on, you know, some uh, television shows, and I just like uh, I wasn't entirely satisfied with my um, appearances. I was like, you know. I need to be more comfortable in the co in, in, in front of the camera. I felt a little bit when I was watching back that I felt a little wooden and stiff. I said, okay, I need to get more comfortable. And so I said, uh, just getting in front of the camera, doing it more regularly is definitely going to help. Yeah, that's for well, sure. Just, yeah. just um, <clears throat> excuse me, just as a side note, Aaron, you said you ran for office in New York? Yes. Yeah, I ran for mayor in 2017. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. All right. So, yeah. yeah. I, I, well, I know, I know he did not win. No, no, I know he did not win. But um, <laughs> how was that experience, though? Oh wow, it was, it was, it was really interesting. Um, I learned a lot. It was, it was, it was scary at times, but it was. I really enjoyed it because it gave me an opportunity to get out there to, you know, spread some, some messages and some ideas about criminal justice reform. Um, uh governmental reform educational reform because like educational reform was really uh, a big portion of what i was running on uh like i wanted to re just redo the curriculums instead of you know and introduce economics uh finance business management entrepreneurship into the curriculum so that kids could graduate in um from high school and not just have to get a minimum wage job they can actually run businesses uh start at higher levels of of companies in, instead of just you know uh mcdonald's or Dwayne reed you know so did you run as a libertarian or you ran as an independent? No, yes yes i ran as a libertarian a uh, libertarian okay that's good yeah. that's good okay <laughs> no wonder he lost <laughs> Well, it sounds like the uh, one of your drivers uh, of your, I guess, political awakening then is is education. Is that is that really uh, uh, your main focus? So that is one of my main focuses now because I realize how much it impacts everything else. Um, so in terms of the criminal justice reform, because I have my own personal experiences with the criminal justice system, but I realize how just a horrible educational system that's designed to set people up for failure leads into that so this, you know the school to prison pipeline is real um yes. it's it because yeah because they, they basically are giving you like one of three outs you're once once you go from school you're either a, a, a like a low-wage worker uh uh military or, or prison you know uh especially in, in certain low quality schools and there's a lot of these low quality schools here in new york city and it's like if you change that you can change the trajectory of so many uh, young people's futures. It it uh, it seems like uh, instead of going directly to prison, uh, you know, don't stop at go, don't collect two hundred dollars. Yes. It's, it's actually um, your your first stop is crime. So because you've got these low wage uh, job opportunities, which you know yes. aren't, and you don't want to go into the military for eight thousand different reasons, yeah. then um, your your alternative if you you know it, and it's probably there's a pipeline that that leads people that direction but it's crime and then they commit crime get caught and yeah. now they're in prison so yeah yeah so that's yeah, what I mean, you're saying yeah you i mean you got the cat on the corner who's like you know listen you can go get this this job flipping burgers for a minimum wage or you could just move some packs for me boom you you you, you yeah. get all new clothes nice cars everything you know and so there's a 
a very capitalistic mindset there, but the government steps in and says, okay, we're taking everything, we're locking you up, you know, and it, 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 it's really, it, it, yeah, it's really messed up. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think there, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of issues there involved with that, with that, with what you just described, I, 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 in general agree, but I think, you know, things at the home and then things with the schools, both, both of which are seriously problematic, I think, these days, I think, um, I think we could do a whole show on, 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 on those issues in terms of how that, that high school to pipeline is really constructed. I mean, what are the elements of its construction, at least on the input side? I think it's something that we could probably talk about one day. I would really like to, to talk to you about that. Uh, I mean, today might not be the day, but we, we should really talk about that. I, 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 I would really love to. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and, and was your thrust to try and introduce uh, competition in education, I guess, school choice, that kind of thing? Or or did you have other ideas on that? Well, I, yeah, I definitely want school choice. But I felt that the the not it wasn't enough to just have the, the opportunity to go to a, a charter school or one of New York City public schools. I felt that because the, the curriculum, it's 13 years of school. And what are people, what are kids actually learning? You know, it's a lot, it's like, it's, it's like they're just keeping kids busy and, you know, just, just keep doing this, keep doing this. And then, okay, now you can uh, graduate and you can't get a good job. So you need to go to college and that's going to be uh, $50,000 a year. So you're going to be in massive debt. It's, it's, it's like this huge trap that is being set up for, for uh, young people. And I don't see enough pushback against it I, I, like yeah there's very little pushback against it like wait a minute this plan you're setting people up for failure and this is you know this is just horrible imagine a business if you set up your customers for failure i, I can't yeah. imagine yeah. Only how, a how, could you, <laughs> yes, how could you expect success i i you know i am um, Aaron, I, I i i mean we may differ slightly on the, on the solution i think we both recognize the problem here about these schools, especially in in the urban parts of America, uh, obviously there's a big problem there with with the schools and in terms of how they're educating our children. Um, we may differ slightly on the on the solution because I think the only thing that's going to solve that problem really and truly is competition in the schools, school choice. Okay. Let 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 parents make the decision where they want to send their kids. I mean, yeah. I raised two boys, and they went for the most part they went um, to public schools. I live in the suburbs of, uh, uh, at the time we were living in the suburbs of, uh, uh, of Sacramento. And it worked out okay, but I had some real problems about the public schools and the things that, some of the things that they were teaching, teaching the kids. Absolutely. And I think since then, since then, it's, it, it have gotten worse. Right. And I think the only way we could attack that problem, and like I said, and I'm, I'm open for ideas, quite frankly, but as I stand right now, the only way we can solve that problem, I believe, is allowing competition in the schools. Like parents make these decisions. Take the very same money we have in the education budget, hand it to the, uh, divide it up among the kids, hand it voucher to the parents, parents decide wherever you want to go. I, I, I think no, that's I'm, the only way it's going to solve. Oh no, I, I, I'm not, I'm not disputing that. I just, and and definitely the, the school choice. Like I was definitely going to support school choice. Um, it was just that. I wanted to make sure that there was changes to the school system in itself, but I want to make sure people have the opportunity that if they just want to get rid of, the, not not even deal with the public school system, they have that opportunity because homeschooling should be, I mean, should be uh, uh, allowed and shouldn't be as as hindered or is even as micromanaged as it is by yes. the state. The state shouldn't be okay. No, you have to teach the kids. Like it's it's our kids. Like why is the state? making these decisions for our kids good point uh, we thought we totally on the same page on that on, on that yes. issue seriously we are yes well aaron you know uh, one of the uh, kind of i guess pivotal people in the in the past of this issue of school choice was milton friedman and i guess a lot of people got exposed to him through free to choose well what sources kind of ex uh, got i guess uh, sort of oriented you towards liberty were you reached early on in life or was there some thinker like milton friedman or somebody who reached ron out? paul um seeing ron paul mm -hmm. <laughs> in the 2012 election um at that time i was doing you know a lot of legal research and at, at the time i was actually incarcerated so i was doing legal research 
And it's when I found out that I'm, I'm looking at looking up law and doing like pro se work with other guys. And I'm finding out that the drug war is like the Democrats are responsible for the, de <laughs> the drug war. It's like, wait a minute. I thought these were the these were supposed to be the good guys. Like they they're just expanding government, locking people up like and I'm, I'm reading a speech by Bill Clinton, like how he's just so proud of himself for just like, I'm going to destroy so many lives. It's just, yeah. I'm awesome, you know? And, yeah. <laughs> and, and so then I'm like, I'm like, who's, I was like, we gotta look at the Republicans now because if they're talking about small government, as, as, as much hell as we're catching from government, that's, that's something we should be looking at. But there were so many Republicans that didn't actually believe in small government until I saw Ron Paul and I'm like, wait a minute, this guy's the real deal. Yes. And yeah. Yes. And so then uh, I heard that was the first time I heard the term libertarian. I was like, I gotta look these guys up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, another, I have... another dis disciple of Ron Paul's uh, fantastic influence over uh, so many young people too. And I'm, I'm assuming Aaron's, Aaron looks pretty young to me. So I'm <laughs> assuming that he's, uh, you know, in that category. So many young people have been uh, turned on to this, the whole idea of, of a philosophy of liberty and principles uh, uh, and from a principled man like Ron Paul. And so, boom, now we've got, uh, you know, these seeds uh, springing up themselves. And here's Aaron, one of those seeds that's blossoming, you know, into somebody with principles. That's awesome. You know, you raised the point about uh, you raised the point about the Republicans doing some of the same crap the Democrats do. You know, and I, I think that's a such a valid point. I mean, I started off, I mean, associated with the Republican Party um, after I became a citizen, which was in in, in the mid nineties. And but the more the more my the deeper I go with the Republicans, the more I see. I mean, some of these guys, they are not different than the Democrats. Right. It right. really bothers me. It truly bothered me, and I. I've since kind of drifted away from them, obviously, and I, I am, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a member of the Libertarian Party, like Jason wants me to be, but um, I, um, <laughs> I, not, I do some of the principles. I'm not I either, uh, but, but I think it's a good idea. I, I should probably join. I've, I've been meaning to, but, but uh, you know, because we can influence, uh, it's easier to, uh, you know, I know the Libertarian Party has uh, lots of issues, but we can be more influential if we Absolutely. if we're like in the Mises caucus, for example, and associate <laughs> with them. And that gets bigger and more uh, influential over the entire Libertarian Party. Then, you know, we could sure stand a better uh, um, uh, success rate in that venue than we can in the Republican venue, for example, or the Democrat venue venue. Although there's people there too, you know, that are that are duking it out for liberty, um, for in both parties. Okay, so uh, okay, I'll mention her name again. So there's Tulsi. And, oh, there we go the again. Yeah, you can't I have, resist. You can't resist. <laughs> and uh, and of course Thomas Massey and uh, Justin Amash and uh, all these other and uh, Rand Paul and all these other Republicans that are. You know, just trying to to put their little fingers in the the wall. That's uh, you know the little Dutch boy trying to keep the the sea out of Holland. You know, and and that's that's what they're doing. And so thank God for them. But I do think that we you know stand a, a better chance of influencing uh, Libertarian Party. At least got the right name. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I'm Aaron. Yeah. I was going to say uh, part of the. Uh, the the reason maybe why we call ourselves the knuckleheads is because I'm having such a hard time convincing these guys. <laughs> tell, tell us too, just a little bit about your future plans for your show too. What do you envision for the future of your show? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so one of the things I've been doing is researching, just doing a lot of research in terms of growing the channel, because uh, I see you have voices that are uh, your 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 young Turks, you know, they've got a, a big following. You've got your uh, uh, you've got people on the right that have these huge followings, and you and I really want the liberty movement to have much more of a voice. We have like this this platform gives us the opportunity to get another perspective out there, 
and the media is not giving us the shot. Like, so traditional media, um, like when Larry Sharp ran here in New York, um, they intentionally shut him out, intentionally. Mm -hmm. Like I remember at one point we're, we're in Times Square, um, not Grand Central Station, and the media is there um, with the Republican candidate and he's got like four people with him. There's 30 of us with Larry, you know, holding up signs and, and a, a cameraman is actually arguing on the phone with his producers to let him cover Larry. Oh, and, wow. and they, yeah, and wow. they refuse. Um, so it's like, I know that we have to take advantage of these, these alternative medias because yeah. this is, this is the, the opportunity to level the playing field. And then, yeah. More, you know, but sure. in, in general, you know, they talk about expanding the, the, the thinking and expanding, putting a different perspective out there. I think at our at our root, at our base, life, liberty, and the freedom to pursue happiness. Yes. We start there, and then everything could grow from there. To me, quite frankly, that's how I think mm -hmm. about things. Right. And um, you know, I think I think we we basically share share that 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 value, and and I think that's a good thing. I, I think that's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I mean, the first thing I thought of was what what happened to Ron Paul during uh, the 2012 election and, yes. and how he yes. was. It's like, uh, who's it? Let's say we, we got a guy in first, we got a guy in second, <laughs> yes. this, other guy, this other guy in fourth. And the, yeah, yeah well, wait a minute. Whoa, what about the guy in third place? Uh, what about right. him? Uh, and he's a congressman, too. I'm yeah, yeah about, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then, of course, I'm a knucklehead for Tulsi. She got <laughs> marginalized by the Democrats. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> she got marginalized big time by the Democrats. Oh, the things they did to her. It's like, uh, oh, yeah, someone, is someone jealous about the white yeah. pantsuit? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, watching MSNBC's coverage of her, they just made stuff up. Like, yeah. oh, they, they called her a Russian asset, and they just yes. ran with it. They ran yeah. with it, and oh, yeah. even after Hillary backtracked, these these the pundits and their you know commentators were still going full full bore with it. It was absurd. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sorry. I just wanted to end on a positive note and, and totally agree with Aaron. You know, it's there's a new sheriff in town, and that sheriff is in the internet, and the internet yeah. is talking. Okay, yeah. and people are listening. Okay, we're not turn, tuning on uh, CNBC and MSNBC uh, anymore. Okay, for the for the most part, we're looking at our cell phone. If we see a podcast that we pops up on iTunes and it's this guy talking about you know the echo chamber, oh, let me give that guy a listen. Okay, and then boom, all of a sudden, off we go to the race. Off Aaron goes to the races. And and that's that's the point I think too. Is it? You know, like Aaron was saying, there's there's these media channels. They're only giving us essentially echo chambers. That's all we're getting. So, you know, if you want to escape the echo chamber, take a look at Aaron's show and uh, go check it out online. And hopefully you'll join us for the next one here, too, on Knuckleheads of Liberty. Thanks so much for joining us. And we will see you at the next one. Thank you for watching the Knuckleheads of Liberty. Listen each week in Sacramento on Comcast Channel 17 for Knuckleheads of Liberty on Monday at 530 p.m.